Hello and welcome back to another edition of Maddie's Rap. I'm your host, the multiple award-winning and world-renowned author and storyteller, Matt D. Talford, author of the beautifully designed and beautifully written, and I'm not tooting my own horn, I had a couple of awards committees to toot it for me, um, but beautifully designed and beautifully written books that you saw in the thumbnails prior to the beginning of this opening segment. Now, um, what are we talking about today, Matt? Uh, before we get into that, let me say a special thank you to my returning subscribers and to my new subscribers who were new as of the last 30 days. And if this is your first time clicking my video, thank you for clicking on the thumbnail. I hope that you will find that this video by the end of it has been entertaining, if nothing else, but hopefully also informative, uplifting, and in some way, shape or form, inspiring because that's what we do over here now um what are we talking about today y'all we are talking about bricks bricks all right and i'm not talking about the type of bricks that you see in the ymca when there's a group of guys running up and down the court that can't shoot <laughs> those aren't the bricks that we're talking about and no shade if you shoot bricks I've shot a few bricks in my time, too. So uh, I'm not a basketball player. I'm more of a tennis player. I do play basketball for fun. And when I get hot, I can hit. But I'm, when I'm not, I shoot bricks, too. But we're not talking about those bricks, okay? We are talking about global currency. A shift in global currency. A shift in global economics. And if you read the opening scripture that I had on the screen for you before this video started, then you probably already know that the purpose of today's video is to draw or explore, let's say that, the purpose of today's video is to explore the possibility of a link between bricks and the end times prophecy found in the book of Revelation. Now. I'm not going to reread that passage of scripture for you guys, but it is, you know, it is right there in uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. So you can write that down. And um, you know what? Is it going to hurt for me to read it? It's not going to hurt. I'll read it again because I know sometimes people drive and you don't you can't look down at your phone or whatever. So for the sake of those who are on the road listening to this video, I'll read that opening passage of scripture. Again, it comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verses 16 through 17, and it reads as such. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name that was revelation chapter why do we put an s on the end of it <laughs> has an s been there before has it always been revelation you know i, I think of the one of the old bibles i saw said the revelation of saint john the divine or something like that so maybe it's revelation but everybody for some reason puts the end on the s on the end of it whatever anyway that was revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 17 now i want to jump right in because i don't want this to be a super long video and I know better than to say that y'all but I'm gonna say it anyway now bricks Matthew what is the link between bricks and that passage of scripture that you read and there's another passage of scripture I'm going to read for you here shortly when we get to it now the link between bricks and that passage of scripture <sighs> let me let me let me start by taking you guys back to and this may rub some of you the wrong way, so if it does, I apologize. That is not the intent, but I got to say what I got to say. Let's take it back a few years in the past, just a few, 2020 and then 2021 subsequently. There were people who were out there leading the push to get everyone pushed right here, you know, you know. Get something shot in your arm, okay? <laughs> to get a shot in your arm. To protect you from this thing, right? And 
the guy at the forefront of the push came out at the beginning of this year after cashing in the stock that he purchased in the beginning that he made 10 times that amount on over that short period of time after cashing in and making his money off the stock that he invested in which was the company that made that thing that got pushed in your arm okay one of the one of the companies that made the thing that got pushed in your arm after he cashed in his chips he said well the thing doesn't we found out it doesn't work it doesn't work um you, you already knew it wasn't gonna work when you did it but that was the smoke screen and i say smoke because y'all that is ultimately what i'm doing here today as a former military man the u.s army in particular i will tell you that there are two applications two military applications for smoke one of them is to signal a landing zone or to signal a strike zone or something to that effect it, it is to use smoke as a signal a signal for something okay um but the other application is to obscure vision of for, for, of someone your enemy it is to obscure their vision so that you cannot see what is going on on the other side of the smoke smoke is and that's really the bigger use of it yeah smoke signals hey this is where you're gonna land a chopper so we can pick up these I was a medic so we could pick up these patients and evac them to a field hospital or take them back to wherever but then there's also hey you know what we need to obscure their vision so that they can't see us moving troops in or so that they cannot see us es escaping all right so my job is to help you all see through the smoke all right so the smoke was hey this thing is going to do this thing if you don't take this thing and then they come out and say that they found out it didn't work you already knew it didn't work so what were you really doing what was the whole purpose of it really all right but the point i'm making is the entire earth got duped into accepting something that was supposed to be good for them and here we are again bricks bricks let's talk about bricks okay um bricks started out as five nations that said hey you know what we don't want the dollar anymore BRICS. That's why the acronym stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Five nations. Well, now that count is up to 24. 24. And growing. Okay? So you really can't even call it BRICS anymore because it's now like, it started out as BRICS and now it's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and a number, 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 P. <laughs> Y'all know how these kids do when they learn the ABCs or whatever. Nama Nama P. That, that's what they should call it now. Don't, don't call it bricks no more. Call it ABCD Nama Nama P. All right? Because you got a whole bunch of nations that keep joining on. And by the time of this video, it could be more than 24. All right? I'll put a screenshot of a uh, of a news article on the screen for you guys so that you can see the number of nations that, you know, it is currently up to as of April or whatever that date of, of that article was. Where Today is May the 4th. Thursday, May 4th, uh, 2023. Now... You have to ask yourself the question, if all of these nations are dumping the dollar, then what are they switching to? What are they switching to as mutually accepted exchange currency? What are they switching to? So the dollar was the global standard for how long, right? For how long? You can go in any country and use your local currency, or you can take the dollar and exchange it for whatever the current exchange rate was so that you can get that local money because the dollar is like hey the dollar is good in any country the u.s dollar is good and now everybody is saying that we're not accepting the dollar anymore so can you see the parallels already between revelation 13 and 16 through 17 and what's going on with bricks or nema nema p <laughs> if you are taking the dollar away if all of these countries are saying i'm not taking the dollar from you anymore then are they switching to a new paper currency a new fiat currency are they switching to something digital digital that if you don't have this new digital currency then you can't buy or sell now i brought up the 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 the, the cv wax scene <laughs> analogy because if you look at it you could almost say and i'm not saying that 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 this is what it was for all of you out there that want to label somebody 
a conspiracy theorist, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm hypothesizing to try to get to the truth because you will know the truth and the truth will make you free, right? But if you don't know the truth, then you're subject to whatever the lie was designed to do. So um, in the same token that everyone was duped into this whole thing of you got to take this or else um, you're not going to be able to do this or you know early on here in the united states it was like um if you don't wear this mask you can't come into the store whatever whatever now i wasn't ever about the mask y'all i'm just keeping it 100 um i kept one in my back pocket just so i ain't have to argue with nobody but i remember going into the supermarket and seeing this dude <laughs> seeing this dude with his family and um See, y'all, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to go there. Let me just say this dude. Let me just say this dude. Y'all read between the lines if you want to. This dude in there with his family and one of the workers said, hey, sir, uh, you you can't um, have a mask on. You can't not have a mask on and be in here. He said, I'm not putting a mask on and neither is my family. And they said, well, OK, sir. Um, and I was like, well, damn, why the, why is I? so you know what I did? I took my mask off and put it in my pocket and dead somebody because I was just like. You, you, you want to talk to me or you want to go over there and talk to I know, you know, we got a different complexion, okay? But since he walked with it, I'm going to walk with it too, all right? But that's a story for another day right there. So anyway, my point is they had everybody thinking that you had to do certain things to get certain things. And I would say that the majority, maybe majority, I don't know, could have been 50-50, I don't know. Could have been less than the majority, whatever. But according to the media and according to what they always showed you, the majority of everyone acquiesced to this thing and said, OK, we with it. Now, that was kind of a choice. But if all of these countries keep doing this thing where they are saying we're not accepting the dollar anymore, how long before they come up with a unified currency? Like, OK, so let's say, for example, we got five nations the bricks let's say let's go with the original five we know it's 24 or more by now by the time you're watching this video but let's go with the original five were they going to agree on which one of those local currencies that the five of them were going to use or were they saying hey we're only going to trade with each other using these currencies or so you can trade in your country with your local currency or one of these currencies well, all of those currencies don't have the same value right and i know that that's the case already with the dollar but when you had a global standard then it's like okay this is the value of the dollar compared to your local currency are they going to now have this little matrix that says this is the value of the 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 chinese yuan versus the russian whatever the currency is versus the indian rupee versus the south african dollar versus are they going to have this matrix now of all, of every time a new nation joins they're going to have a matrix saying okay since you got this currency that's going to get messy so you know what's coming there's going to be a a single currency that they accept and it's not going to be fiat it's not going to be fiat it's going to be digital okay so if you ain't signed on with that digital currency your money's no good here now um that is my hypothesis of where i think this thing is headed now i'm calling it a hypothesis i'm not calling it fact because it is not in place but sometimes you just got to do the math right now um I want to talk about why you don't need to fear that, okay? Why you do not need to fear that. And you know what? In doing my research for today's video and looking at Revelation 13, this wasn't part of the whole you can't buy or sell thing, but there was something that jumped off the page at me. There was something that jumped off the page at me. And I want I want to read that for y'all because to me, this short passage of scripture actually, to me, summarized or defined was another definition of chosen ones now everybody's always talking about the chosen ones we hear that so much now on social media we hear it on here on youtube um you ain't gonna never hear it on mainstream media right because <laughs> mainstream media play for the other team you know what i'm saying if you know what i'm saying if you know you know um however on social media here on youtube some of these uh uh, uh internet-based video platforms you hear the term chosen one so much well, let me read this this short passage of scripture from uh, the book of Revelation for you. And again, y'all know I come from scripture. That's my background. That is the basis behind a lot of my videos. 
the word, okay? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And now before some of y'all get technical and be like, well, that thing's been translated a thousand, thousand times. I know it's been translated a thousand, thousand times. However, when you have an eye to see and an ear to hear, you can read through the mistranslations to get the meat out of it, all right? All right? So let us go to, you know what? I'm going to read chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 for y'all. Let's go there right now. Now, this is a little bit of an aside. I'm going to take you all down the side street. I know there's some of you all out there that don't like to get the side street view. And there's others of you that hit me up all the time in the comments and on social media saying, Matt, I love it when you take me and show me the neighborhood and then bring me back to the house next door. Thank you. Please keep doing it. So for y'all, I'm going to do this today. Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns... Ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now I'm not going to attempt to try to decipher what those what what those crowns are, whatever. Y'all can pontificate on that. You can leave it in the comments. That's not the basis of, or that's that's not the subject of today's video. But I'll keep going because this is relevant to the scripture I'm going to get to. And the beast, verse two, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? That almost sounds familiar because like, who can make war with a couple of these nations on the earth that I won't name right now? But I think y'all can look look at yeah, I think y'all can look at global events and, and recent history and maybe draw some inferences to who was able to make war with this beast. And you could also look at ancient history too, because some might say the Romans, and that was the uh, story of the Romans at the time. Like, who can make war with them? But anyway, I'm not trying to decipher that right now. Verse five. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Now, I've said this across a number of videos, y'all. We, we are here as part of an this is an ancient war. This this thing is not new. This is ancient. OK, same old foe. All right. Verse seven. And it was given unto him. To make war with the saints. You can scratch out saints and write in chosen ones right there. Okay. Set apart. Okay. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now let's look at that verse eight again. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So whose names are not written in the lamb's book of life that was established from the foundation of the world. What does that mean? The chosen ones names were written and sealed long before they arrived in this time slice in this realm all right so <laughs> that right there to me is the kicker that explains who the chosen ones are the chosen ones are already named they're already named and their names are not earth names you wouldn't hear oh well matthew's the chosen one that's my that's that's the name i go by okay me llamo mateo <laughs> okay that's the name i go by Mayamo or Teyamas or whatever. That means what are you called? Yamad is to call. So Teyamas, what do they call you? Como Teyamas, what do they call you? Mayamo, Mateo. I call myself Matthew. That's what I call myself, but that's not my soul name. Y'all pay attention. Pay attention. Okay? So those soul names are already written in a book established somewhere in the ether. Those are the chosen ones. Now, okay? All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in that book. So that tells you right there, the chosen ones don't fall for the BS. They never do. They never do. 
the chosen ones never the, the people the voices that you heard during this last pandemic that were speaking out against it and like i'm not falling for the bull their names are they, they, those are the chosen ones because it says right here in verse 8 all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book now that's going a little bit further i'm not saying that you're not chosen if you took the jab okay a lot of y'all ask me about that and stuff that's not saying that you're not a chosen one but you ain't you ain't worshiping you might have taken the jab and you know you're still not worshiping the system you're not worshiping the people who presented the jab maybe you just fell victim to the fear okay but you're still here thank god for that all right now um getting back to the point i wanted to point that out because a lot of people talk about chosen ones or whatever and now i'm going to tell you why you don't need to fear okay number one bricks could be a part of the pluto retrograde in capricorn but that's not going to last long. Pluto retrograde in Capricorn is going to end later this year. OK, so Pluto entered the sign of Aquarius. We know that Pluto is the planet of destruction. It comes through and destroys that which no longer works so that something new and better can replace it. That's what Pluto does. That's that Plutonian energy. That is what Pluto does. OK, so when Pluto comes through, if you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, <laughs> Pluto destroys. All right. Now. Pluto also destroys and then it reestablishes in the energy of the sign that it's in. So let me make that very clear. Capricorn is a sign of structure. It is a sign of order. Aquarius is a sign of freedom and rebellion. It is the revolutionary. So is bricks going to look like it's going to be the thing, the ticket? Yeah, it's going to look like it's the ticket for a while. But when that 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 retrograde in Capricorn ends, it's going to be right back to tearing down these structures that do not work. All right. Y'all check out my video that I did talking about how um, uh, Daniel chapter two links to this uh, Pluto entering the sign of Aquarius. I, I show I line up this astrology with the prophecy. And some of y'all have a problem with that. But it's you need to break those chains off your mind. Religion. You did not come here religious. All right. Religion is one of those control structures that's going away. Along with these other structures that don't work, that enslave mankind. That that that's that's gotta happen. That it, it, it's going to go away. I'm here to tell y'all that. So all of these structures are gonna fall. So that's one reason why you do not need to fear. But there's another reason, and it is found in the second book of Ezra's, which is a part of the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha. These books that were removed from the standard Bible. Because maybe somebody didn't want you to know what was in them. All right. Let's read. Let's read that passage from from Second Ezra. All right. This comes from Second Ezra chapter six. I'm actually going to read uh, verses one down through verse uh, twenty eight. OK, and I'm going to go through this fast so I can get, present some final thoughts and wrap this video up. This is the second reason why you do not need to uh, fear. Let me let me give it to you. Let me give you the summary. OK, the summary is. The people who have been running this world for the longest, their time is up. And it is written right here. It was prophesied thousands of years ago. Their time is up. These are the signs that everything that you're seeing right now are the signs that this system that was put into place to enslave mankind is now crumbling. And they're fighting tooth and nail to hold on to it. But they cannot. And I'm going to read for you why they cannot right here. Second Ezra chapter six. In the beginning, and I skipped the first little part. In the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or even the winds blew, before it thundered and lightened, or ever the foundations of paradise were laid, before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together, or ever the heights of the air were lifted up, before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys in Zion were hot hot chimneys volcanoes okay verse 5 and before the present years were sought out and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure the revelation just talked about that they were sealed those names were sealed in the beginning they were sealed before the foundation of the earth was laid those are the chosen ones and they keep coming back they keep coming back Verse five again, and before the present years were sought out and or ever the inventions of them that now F up were turned before they were sealed 
that have gathered faith for a treasure. Verse 6, Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone. This is the Most High speaking through the prophet. And through none other, by me also they shall be ended, and by none other. So he said, look, <laughs> all of this stuff was made by me, and when it ends, it'll be me ending it. All right? I'm going to keep going. Verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Parting asunder of the times. Division. When you part something asunder, you split it in two. Division. Split. 3D, 5D, split. Y'all go watch that video. All of this is happening, okay? Time does not exist. So it's a split of realities. All right? Verse 7 again. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's should have said of from her, because I mean Jacob didn't give <laughs> I mean I mean um um I, Jacob didn't, I mean, Isaac didn't give birth to, to Jacob and Esau. It was really uh, Rebecca. All right? But anyway, you know, with this is the scripture is overly masculine. But y'all just go with it. All right? Y'all just go with it. I can, you, when you when you see, you cannot unsee. All right. Here we go. Verse eight again. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is is the beginning of it that followeth. Y'all need to know who Esau and who Jacob are, okay? I got a video where I broke some of that down. Some people don't like to get into that because some people get any feelings about it, but that's what lies do to you. Read Jeremiah 16 and 19, all right? I'll continue. Verse 9 again, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Verse 10, the hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand or other. I'm sorry. Other question. Let me reread that. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. So he's talking to Ezra's now. He turns and says, don't ask me another question, Ezra's. OK, he says other question, Ezra's ask thou not. So he's saying, don't ask me any more questions. That's it. But Ezra's fires back in verse 11 and says, I answered then and said, O Lord, that bearest rule. If I have found favor in thy sight, I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens, whereof thou showedest me part last night. Now, you're going to have to go back and read the, uh, the previous uh, verses. Uh, I'm sorry, the previous text, uh, 2 Ezra 1 through 5, to know what he's talking about. I'm not going to do that here. Verse 13, so he answered and said unto me, stand up upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice, and it shall be as it were a great motion, but the place where thou standest shall not be moved. And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end, and the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech of these things trembleth and is moved, for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. Verse 17, And it happened that when I had heard it I stood up upon my feet and hearkened, and behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. Verse 18, And it said, Behold, the days come, that I will begin to draw nigh, and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. I'm going to read that again. That voice said, Behold, the days come, that I will begin to draw nigh or draw near and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. This is the most high speaking to the prophet Ezra. Verse 19. And will begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. They that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. Did y'all see my last video where I was talking about protect the kids? They that hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And it's not just the kids. It's been a lot of rulers that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. I'm going to keep going. 
Verse 20. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I show these tokens. The books shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall all see together, or they shall see all together. So these books are going to be opened in the sky. Have you ever heard some of these 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 people like Dr. Bruce Lipton and you know Joe Dispenza and and uh, Billy Carson and 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 some of these other people that that are that understand energy. Have you heard them talk about this is like a simulation we're in? It's like a computer field. It's like a virtual reality, so to speak. Um, as as this age continues to progress, I've even heard people, normal lay people, say that they're sitting minding their business, and all of a sudden they see grid lines. Like like computer like green lines that look like grid lines appear momentarily and then vanish. All right, so we know that <laughs> this where where we live, what we live in, is not what they've been teaching us. All right, but that's a story for another day. So if you understand, you understand. This is what it means when he says the book shall be opened before the firmament. The firmament is above us. All right, so you can look up and see. What? I don't know. But it says the book shall be open before the firmament and they shall all see together. This is going to be a physical thing. This this it this this is not talking about spiritual. This is going to be physical. All right. Verse 21. And the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. The women with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old. That's like first going into second trimester and they shall live and be raised up. All kind of stuff going to be happening. Verse 22, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. So wherever there was like, you know, sown, we're talking about land that has been cultivated or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's going to look wild. It's going to look like all of a sudden it's going to turn into a jungle or whatever. And the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet, verse 23, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Now, I didn't know what that three hours meant. I know it's not three clock hours on a day, but if we understand that on a clock face you have 12 hours, and we also know that there's 12 months in a year, it could this three, three hours could mean three months, all right? Where, where the waters, the fountains, the rivers, the fresh water sources are going to stand still. Verse 25, whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. Verse 26, and the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. I don't even know what that means. Verse 27, for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome and the truth, which hath been so long without fruit, shall be declared. The truth, some universal truth is going to be declared. Now, you can find some cross references to that in the book of Revelation as well. I'm not going to go into it, but that was Second Ezra chapter 6 verses 1 through 28 and i love that verse uh verse 27 verses 27 to 28 for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith it shall flourish corruption shall be overcome and the truth which has which has been so long without fruit shall finally be declared now again that sounds very plutonian aquarian to me <laughs> pluto destroys that which no longer works and aquarius is a liberator it is the freedom fighter. Interesting times we're living in, y'all. Interesting times. So that is to get back on my get back on the road now. That's the reason why you don't need to fear bricks. If you're chosen, you're not falling for any of this stuff anyway. But the purpose of this video is to make you aware, because when you hear these things, you need to be able to understand. You need to be able to juxtapose them to prophecy and understand where we are. I talk, I, I talk about this all the time. The Bible is not a religious book. It is a spiritual book. It is a book of spirituality. It is a book of instruction on how to unlock your life and live your best life. That's really what it is. It is also a book of history of a certain people 
and the history of the whole world to a degree, but it's mostly about a certain set of people. And it is a book of prophecy that is telling you what is to come. Now, as an author myself, I know that when you have finished writing a book and you have finished proofing it and editing it, and that book is finally published and you get the final copy, the final output, and it's published, that manuscript is sealed. That book is not changed anymore. Perhaps a new book is written, perhaps there's a second edition written, but that book right there, that book is sealed. It is an entire self-contained world in that book, fiction or non-fiction. And whatever is written in that book, when you open that book and turn to that first page and read that those first opening words, you are entering into a world where everything is already sealed and everything that's written in that book is going to happen. Whatever's gonna happen, you start at chapter one, there's 10 chapters, whatever's gonna happen in chapter 10, is already written and it's going to happen you just haven't gotten to chapter 10 yet that's how these things work that's how they work okay so um there's some other prophecies out there the hopi prophecy i'm not going to get into that for time's sake but you guys can look up the hopi prophecy because a lot of those things that were mentioned in the hopi prophecy are beginning to be see, uh, seen and there are a lot of people that are recording videos about some of the cosmic anomalies if you will and they're not anomalies they were written it was written for them to happen but the cosmic anomalies that they're seeing, and a lot of people are recording these things on their cameras. So you can look, you look on YouTube, look up Hopi prophecy. You, it'll open up, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be a door that you can open and go down and see other things, whatever. Now, um, with the cosmos exiting the age of Pisces, we're entering into the age of Aquarius. So we're in the dawn of a new cosmic spring. I talked about that. I'll leave a link in the. Um, description box below to the video where i'm talking about you don't need to be concerned about though is the world coming to an end you don't need to worry i got just just go through the uh and there may be something popping up over here for you too to click on if you're watching this from a phone or a tablet or computer um but we're entering into a new cosmic spring with the springtime we know on the earth spring everything is new in the cosmos everything is new when you enter a new cosmic spring aquarius is the first sign of the cosmic year okay you leave pisces you go into aquarius pisces always passes off winter to spring i don't care if you're on earth on earth it pat well depending on what hemisphere you're in no shade to the, the the people in the southern hemisphere but i'm dealing with the northern hemisphere okay because it's closest to the center of the earth all right um if you're looking at it <laughs> i'm not gonna get into that uh, y'all almost got me y'all almost got me on a whole flat earth thing i'm not i'm not gonna get into that all right but if you're looking at it from top top down the northern hemisphere is closest to the center of the earth when you know you know all right um so but in the northern hemisphere pisces passes the spring off to aquarius uh to to aries in the cosmos pisces passes the old the end of winter i said passes spring off. yeah it passes winter off to spring and it hands that off to aries on the earth in the cosmos it does the same thing but it goes in the opposite direction so it's passing it off to Aquarius Aquarius is the first sign of newness in the cosmos everything's about to be made new you just heard it in that prophecy from second Ezra's all right um old systems have to die for new ones to spring forth so everything's gonna be fine y'all don't worry about it don't worry about it Aquarius is what it is the water bearer what is water water is life so when Aquarius comes and pours out that water it fertilizes the ground so that new life can spring forth all right that's why you have the imagery of Aquarius being a person carrying water and pouring it out. Now, um, um, Aquarius is also the rebel. What does Aquarius rebel against? It rebels against systems that restrict, systems that um, do not set free. Aquarius is pouring that water out. Look, this is for everybody. I'm not pouring it out just for me. I'm pouring this out for everybody. The, the opposite sign, I tell y'all sometimes in my astrology videos, if you want to know what the sign is about, look at the opposite sign. The opposite of Aquarius is Leo. Leo is, hey, I'm the star of the show. I'm the center of attention. Aquarius is like, no, everybody. Everybody's included. So uh, Aquarius brings forth newness for everyone. Aquarius comes to break the chains that shackle the greater good. That's Aquarian energy, okay? Um, And we got Pluto moving into Aquarius. So you got... It's a two punch combination, y'all. Pluto destroys that which does not work. Aquarius rebels against restriction. Money is restriction. Money is restriction. Okay. 
money is restriction. In the age of Aquarius, humanity will finally be set free after a long time of living under physical, mental, and spiritual oppression. Aquarius sets free. Pluto destroys that which does not work. Okay? So, bricks, money, all of that stuff is restriction. Why? Because the people who control money, they have, through might, through strength, through military, through might, taken control of resources that are free for everyone. Resources that are free for everyone. They have taken control of these resources and told you that you have to work to get money to have access to the things that the earth provides for sustenance. Water, um, shelter, and food. The earth freely gives that. The earth does not charge anyone for any of that. The only thing you have to pay is whatever labor it takes you to climb a tree and get a piece of fruit. Or whatever labor it takes for you to, if you want to cultivate and grow something special, okay? Or whatever label, or whatever labor it, it, it costs you to, whatever physical, um, um, whatever number of calories are required for you to go walk to a, a pond where there's some fish and pull you a piece of fish, pull a fish out to eat, okay? Now, if, if you're vegetarian, you're vegan, then you know, you ain't eating no fish, whatever. But don't knock somebody that does eat fish, all right? Because fish eat fish. So this y'all stop. Don't even get me started on that today. Um, oh, don't eat the animal. Animals eat animals. All right. So don't y'all y'all leave me alone. Y'all leave me alone with that. Um, if you want to eat meat, eat meat. If you don't want to eat meat, don't eat meat. Period. All right. Um, so that's it. Let me tell y'all something. The BRICS news is is pretty much low vibrational and it's designed to get you to panic and get you to look for someone to come and save you. That's the setup, y'all. That is the setup. I just put you on the game here. That is the setup. This BRICS news is to get you worried, get you in some low vibrational energy so that you panic. So whatever system they come out with and say, hey, listen, the dollar's collapsing. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? The dollar's going to collapse. It's going to be hyperinflation. We're not going to be able to. Our money's going to be worthless. That's in America, right? That's in America. That's in America's allies that, that haven't bailed on them and gone into BRICS. That, that's where you're hearing that. That's where you're hearing that talk. All right. Um, but I'm going to tell you all something. <laughs> I think that the publishers of the dollar are in on it. The publishers of the dollar are in on it. Banking is something that's international. I remember watching Game of Thrones. I'm going to say this, y'all. I'm going to get ready to wrap it up. I remember watching Game of Thrones. I watched all, I believe it was eight seasons of Game of Thrones. And there was one line in one season that I remember that stood out to me. And I was like, hmm, very interesting that they wrote this. It was Tywin Lannister, who was the father of the Lannisters, who were the most powerful family and tribe on in, in the Seven Kingdoms or whatever. They were like the baddest ones. They, they had all the money. They had all the coins. They had all the bricks. <laughs> so they were able to wage war against anybody and excel. But I remember what the leader of that clan said. He told someone, he said, we get our money from the Iron Bank. And he said, the thing with the Iron Bank is this. The Iron Bank loans money to both sides of the war. He said this, in the, it, was, it was masterful writing. It was brilliant. And it was very eye-opening. He told this person, this character he was speaking to, I believe it was his son, but it could have been somebody else. He said, the Iron Bank loans money to both us and our enemies. And he said... When we fight, whoever loses, the Iron Bank gives them less money or takes away the money that they're giving it to, giving to them and starts giving it to the other side. And then whoever loses that war, the victors have to pay the Iron Bank back the money. So the Iron Bank is like this bank that in, in, in this fictional world or this fictitious world of, of the seven kingdoms from Lord of the Rings, not Lord of the Rings, Lord have mercy, um, from Game of Thrones. It's all kind of the same whatever but um that this fictitious bank in this world created uh by george rr R. martin in game of thrones and game of thrones if that ain't telling in and of itself all right and they loan money to everybody and when you win the, you lose the war you're out you be you become either destroyed or you become a slave to whoever conquered you but guess who the conquerors are slaves to they're slaves to the iron bank the iron bank ain't fighting no war they just giving money to whoever fights. So with that being said, 
that you can see the parallels and be like wait a minute why are we panicking when the publishers of the dollar could right could very well be in on it if everybody's supposed to be moving to a one world currency right but again i'm not worried about it because there's this split coming there's this split we we saw it I, again go go check out my video there'll be a link in the description box um was a five was a 3d 5d split prophesy go check that out okay um there's a split coming so in this new world that's coming this new heaven and earth there ain't gonna be no need for money it ain't gonna be no need for money because the earth is gonna give her fruit to all its inhabitants but those inhabitants are gonna be the righteous ones because guess what there can't be any more of this hey let's fight and take over these resources and then sell them to the people that share the same oxygen with us that share the same air that we breathe that that live on the same soil that's got to go that's the system that's got to go so if the publishers of the dollar are in on this whole BRICS thing and I'm talking about the publishers of the American dollar then what we could possibly be witnessing <laughs> is a massive case of good cop bad cop right a massive case of good cop good cop bad cop if you don't know what that is look it up good cop bad cop is basically where you know when when uh when when the police want to get the story out of somebody one guy comes in and roughs him up and then the other guy comes in and says hey look I can save you. I can keep him off of you. But you got to tell us what's happening. No, nah, let me at him again. I want uh, uh, no, 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 don't hit me. Listen, if you want him to stop hitting you, man, listen, I'm trying to help you here. Let me bring you some snacks. And what's your favorite soft drink? <laughs> Y'all have seen First 48. It's, it's funny how they like you sold them out for a soda and a bag of chips. Anyway, um, <laughs> so it's a massive case of good cop, bad cop to get you to gladly accept a new single universally accepted digital currency but again ultimately that system is going to fail it is so don't worry it don't, it don't don't worry it's gonna fail why well because it's an attempt by a dying power structure to hold on to its grip over humanity but alas it is written and it is divine time for that old system to go so i see one of two theories here in closing this whole BRICS thing is either a massive case of good cop, bad cop that all of the nation's leaders have co-signed on, even though they're, 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 God, we got to do something. We got to do something. All of these guys are dropping a dollar. Either it's a case where all of the nations of the world are signed on to it, but they're presenting the public, the ones who need to be ruled over and controlled with this, this panic. All right. That's going to get them on a new single currency that will make it easier to control them. Or it could be a case of trading the devil that you know for the devil you don't. All right. Either it's good cop, bad cop to get you everyone to accept a new global currency. Or it's a case of trading in the devil that you know for the devil you don't know. You're trading in the dollar for something that you, you know, there's something to be said about that. But anyway, y'all. That's all I got for you today. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I want to hear from you guys in the comments. What do you think this whole, what do you think the end of BRICS looks like? I want to hear from you in the comments. What are your thoughts on what you think this thing is going to look like when the dust settles? Now, according to, you know, the ancient prophecies that prophesied this reality split, a lot of us aren't even going to see that anyway. I mean, remember, those, those names were written in the book of life before the foundation of the earth was ever established so that's almost like that's almost like um uh what am i saying here that's almost like being cast for the next film you got you got one film company and they produce all of these films or whatever and they got these casting directors and these writers and everything they write these different scripts and they already know who they want for the next movie and you ain't it <laughs> so either you're in that next movie you're in that next book that's written that that hasn't been opened yet, but is already sealed because this one, this one was sealed before this one was built. But if the new earth is already built and is coming, then those names that were written in this book were sealed for that one. All right. Either you're in it or you're not. All right. Either, <laughs> either you won't bow down and worship this new system, which means that you ain't your name wasn't recorded in that book. So guess what that means? You stay with that old system. You probably gonna still be getting controlled. You probably won't see this video anymore. <laughs> well, you won't see this video anymore because it won't be necessary anyway. Because the people in the new earth, the new heaven, they ain't gonna be paying 
for whatever they're eating and for wherever they're living. Like my man Ralph Smart says all the time, he says we're supposed to be the most intelligent species and yet we're the only one that pays for where we live and where we eat. The animals, I can look out my yard every night and see them rabbits going in on grass or whatever they're trying to eat. That's why I had to move my garden and raise it up because they, they started, oh, look, stay out my vegetables. Y'all got plenty of food all around here. Leave my vegetables alone. Those are for me, all right? Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, they just come out. They come out of wherever, whatever den, pen, hole, whatever they live in. They come out and eat. And their only job is to get food and avoid predators. That's it. That's it. And them other predators' the job is to come out and find these rabbits. All right. The hawk, he looking, he flying over looking for a squirrel. I saw a hawk with a squirrel put him up in the tree the other day. I was like, wow. It's the ecosystem, y'all. So uh, anyway, you shouldn't have to work for another man to get money to pay for something that you should be getting for free anyway. God provides for all of us. So. Who is another man to take control of the resources on the earth? To take control of free energy. I saw that video too. Energy is free. Don't let anybody tell you anything. Energy is free. But the people who control the... They take control of these free energy centers and harness them into something that they can then delve out to whomever they will for a certain price. At the end of the day, is to keep you working so you don't get to enjoy this earth that was created for all of us to enjoy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new to the channel and you like uh, this type of content, please hit the subscribe button. And y'all listen, do me a huge favor. Share this video with just one person. You, each one of you watching this video right now knows somebody, at least one person, that this type of content resonates with. Share this video with them. I'm not asking you to share this with 10 people. I'm not asking you to share it with five. I'm not even asking you to share this video three times. I'm just asking you to do me a favor and share this video with one person. Just one. That's all I'm asking. We got to wake up, y'all. It's time. It's time. Let's wake up. Let's all keep fighting against the BS. And really, there's, there's no fight because it's already written. The Most High said he was going to return. He was going to draw an eye and visit this earth that he created. Book of Ezra. Check it out. I had it on the screen. So, really, there is no fight. This, the battle belongs to him. And I ain't saying that to sound churchy-fied, but it is true. Yolanda Adams dropped that song. She said, the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. It's not ours. All we got to do, our only battle is not letting our mind uh, uh, sink down into low vibrational energy. When you're low vibrational, then you're being controlled. When you're high vibrational, you cannot be controlled. So stay high vibrational, family. And last but not least, tell somebody you love them and mean it. How do you mean it? You have to show it. Love is a verb. It is the noun as well. But when we focus on the verb, the noun always takes care of itself. Peace, family.